Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have gone up in price. Now these cards have done extremely well and have steadily increased. Starting with a reprint, a ninth edition reprint. I totally forgot this was reprinted in one of the core sets. It's a $10 card and it is rising. Anytime you can manipulate your deck for land in EDH, that's considered very good. One drops are also, one drops you get so much advantage because yes, it's not so ring, but it will allow you to search for a lot of land. Now, it's nice because you have multiple opponents and you can only play this ability if an opponent controls more land than you. Assuming you're not going first, this is almost always true. Great card and something that should steadily go up in price barring the reprint. Now, next card I want to talk about is Nico Boas. Nico Boas is doing well. His pre-release foil is around $60. I want to highlight this one in particular. Pre-release, this particular pre-release foil might be more valuable than other ones just because Hour of Devastation, Amaket, that this is his set. So typically people actually like the non-pre-release foil over the pre-release foil. But I don't see that being the case here given this is his block. So maybe this one would be slightly more expensive than the regular set foil, but shouldn't be that much of a difference. He's definitely going to see a lot of EDH play. Any deck that can run him will run him. Nico Bolas is a very popular Planeswalker. It makes a lot of sense that his price is what it is. He's a known quantity. It's not a mystery. Now, the one thing that has been going on is legacy cards. This card is on the reserve list and it is part of a legacy deck. It's very good. Have been seeing more and more price spikes. And it is due to the fact that GPs will now have legacy as one of its formats, which is great. And the Pro Tour will actually have a feature the legacy as well. So they have done a total 180 on how they treat legacy. I think that's good. I do hope that they take in consideration that a lot of these cards are extremely expensive. There are many places to reprint it, but reserve list cards are still a big issue, in particular the dual lands um, being on the reserve list. Now, if you said, oh, okay, this card, that card's on a reserve list, maybe, but to have your mana base on a reserve list, it just feels bad to pay $2,000 for a set of underground seas. The other big thing is modern. Modern is going to see a resurgence. Lots of GPs in modern. Modern is my current favorite format. I think it does solve the problem of reprints. Legacy, you have a bunch of cards that can never been, be reprinted. Modern, everything will be reprinted to oblivion. But that being said, even when a card is reprinted, it can still go up in price. It's just a matter of when. So this card started out at 20, went all the way down to 10, and now it's back up to 25. Definitely possible. And a reprint does not mean the absolute death of a, a card. I mean, you just have to wait it out. And it's very, if modern grows, uh, the player base itself grows, then the format will be fine. Uh, it's when it stops growing that I would be concerned of the value of the cards. But as all these Modern Masters 2015 cards have shown, they can rebound pretty well. Now, one of the cards I do want to take a little bit of time to talk about is Philia. Philia is great. Um, she is great in Legacy. She is great in Modern. Definitely one of my favorite cards. I still remember buying her for under $2, and people thought that was crazy low. Uh, crazy high, actually. And it turns out that C was absolutely it. I mean, C was the card. C is a $12 card now. You do not see that type of return on many cards. Now, C did dodge reprints. 
But being the fact that she is a legendary character essential to the story, I expected her to dodge reprint. So it wasn't something that I was not... Um, it's something that I knew that she would not be reprinted or it would be very difficult to reprint her. And yeah, so they reprinted her as some type of promo, but that one has artwork, which is kind of strange. That one's a little strange, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, next, Endless Ranks of the Dead. So this card was near bulk and it is now a $5 card. Zombies are in, and the more zombie cards zombies are in, and Innistrad itself is a valuable set. I don't know how old a set has to be. Uh, it would be very interesting to see RTR. So Innistrad, I don't consider modern, uh, modern magic sets in terms of printing. There was the print run was still minimal compared to the print runs of today. RTR is what really blew the doors open. Uh, the player growth was exponential at that point. Um, players were buying everything they could to put in their closet. And it's not uncommon for you to see a closet full of RTR from just a random player. That being said, Innistrad has proven itself to be quite valuable and the box prices have gone up. RTR, on the other hand, has just kind of tanked. Talking about ages and vampires and all this fun stuff the commander 2014 this is a this would have been a fascinating speculation during battle for zendikar it looks like it's sub two dollars sub 250 maybe and now it is a ten dollar card the interesting part about this is supply you could pick these up tons of them just tons and tons and tons because Stores would crack these open and sell these singles, and they would crack open dozens, if not close to hundreds of these, and that's what I like. I like when you can buy a card from a vendor, and you don't need to buy from like a hundred different vendors. You can just buy it from one or two, a hundred copies a piece. So I like this card. Does not surprise me that it has gone up in price. Definitely something that is warranted in my opinion and should continue all right so my last card is a big surprise it is magnus magus of the moon holy blank this card is expensive my god last time i remember this card was during rtr like that's probably when i like was doing more mtg finance than i am now buying and selling and trading i remember like oh this is just like kind of jank at that point it was like four dollars i want to say and I was like, yeah, this is good, but it's not good as Blood Moon. Now it is a $33, <laughs> wow, $33 regular non-foil and a $109 foil. That is insane. So will I see a reprint soon? Hopefully soon. Uh, there is a lot of value that can be reprinted. Uh, it's not just limited to fetch lands and the... Uh, the land base like horizon canopy there's a lot of just r random cards like magus of the moon that is insanely valuable for some reason now yes it is very good and blood moon got a reprint so this one went up in place of blood moon had blood moon not got reprinted blood moon would probably be more expensive than this card Overall, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of activity in modern and legacy cards right now, which is kind of interesting from an MTG Finance perspective. Lots of movements up, very few movements down. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.